It's uh, indeed an honor, uh, very good afternoon to all. It's indeed an honor to be uh, invited as uh, a speaker to this uh, very prestigious uh, seminar. Uh, I was scanning the names of those who have uh, uh, presented seminar in this, uh, uh, in this seminar, and they were really uh, uh, prominent persons in science and in policies and politics, even in politics. I hope I could uh, be at least near to them, if. But anyway, Actually, uh, Victor Neto was, uh, had created uh, an international reaction. And in fact, the Philippine Daily Inquirer had in its uh, front page um, ban uh, uh, bananas, uh, uh, sexless bananas are near extinction. That was one of their uh, caricature. But this, uh, um, uh, this is a front cover of a uh, very popular, well, uh, uh, internationally popular journal, New Scientist. It's a very popular uh, international journal. Those of that city, uh, I will assure you that this is a very popular journal. And to land uh, caricature in as a cover page, I must have uh, caught the attention of the editor. The last days of the bananas, that was in 2003. And it's predicting that banana industry, the bananas will uh, die or will be extinct by how many years from now? It's now 2012, by 2013, that will be next year. Uh, well, uh, this is one of the predictions that uh, uh, do not happen, actually. Um, but the message has not lost, uh, the message was not lost at all. It was said, it was uh, uh, put in there just to emphasize a warning that uh, uh, the banana as an industry is under threat. And uh, fortunately, for the pathologist, uh, uh, the threat that they have identified are uh, uh, banana diseases. And if you uh, get the context at that time, there was a, that was the time when biotechnology was uh, getting or trying to get uh, a lot of so, uh, some support, funding support. But uh, the science community uh, felt that uh, uh, banana research has been uh, underfunded, and with this, it has caused uh, it has caught the attention of many donors. And in fact, this was the trigger of a big program on banana genomics, Mosa genomics. <clears throat> okay, but the issue is banana diseases. Okay, last, uh, uh, if you have been reading the newspaper towards the end of last year, I'm sure you have uh, uh, seen these uh, press releases. Fungal diseases present, threatens the banana industry, uh, etc. <coughs> Uh, and there is a need to uh, support research and we have to do something, otherwise the banana industry in the Philippines will uh, collapse or it will be uh, extinct by go to other places. Is this prediction the same as the prediction earlier? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe. But, Again, let's not, uh, let's not uh, uh, take this uh, as, uh, easily as it is, because there is a real threat to the banana industry uh, uh, due to a bad disease. Um, okay, uh, my presentation, I will review the Philippine banana Cavendish industry. My talk is more on the Cavendish industry, that is the, uh, the major um, industry that is affected by this uh, disease. The other, uh, the small-scale banana industry is, uh, is also affected, but the uh, nature of cropping system of the small-scale banana industry because of genetic diversity, cropping system diversity, they are more resilient, they are less vulnerable to the effect of these diseases. Then I'll give you a historical background of panel and its importance. 
a little bit more of discussion about the status of Usarian Wheel in the Philippines, current R&D summary of uh, uh, R&D being uh, taking place, and some prospects. If you look at uh, banana, banana is grown in more than 100 uh, countries uh, the world over. And in the Philippines, it's, uh, bananas also is grown everywhere from uh, Batanes to Tawi Tawi. But the export banana industry is focused only to that small portion of Mindanao. The reason is that they do not have typhoon there. The soil is okay, that is good. The rainfall pattern is uh, very uniform on the run. So the export industry is located here, mainly in the Davao, uh, Davao del Norte, and Bukit Nun, and lately the Bukit Nun area, some in Cotabato. Okay, the history of uh, the development, uh, history of banana industry. Uh, the banana industry, actually, the export banana industry, originated from, this, from Central America, the so-called Banana Republic, uh, the Central America, they produce a lot of bananas for export to Senator of the United States of America. And it was in 1960, uh, uh, later part of the 60s, uh, that uh, the big plantations in Davao del Norte were uh, established. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, this expanded to more, uh, more provinces. The first big uh, 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 plantation was uh, uh, established by the Gloriandos with United Fruit Company. The, uh, the, uh, it's, uh, their company is called Tadeco, the Ta Tagum Development Corporation. They established the plantation, they produce it. They were held by a multinational United Fruit Company, which bought the, the, the produce and sell them to the uh, international market. The Cavendish bananas are now currently planted or grown in 70,000 hectares. There was a law during Marcos and the, the, the decrees that we can only limit up to 25,000 hectares of bananas in the Philippines uh, to, uh, to prevent oversupply of uh, bananas. But uh, that uh, law has, been, has just recently been uh, changed. But even before it was changed, the increase in production area was uh, 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 tremendous because the market was expanding like uh, uh, very rapidly. And uh, the estimate of 70,000 is very modest. I, I heard from my colleagues uh, in the industry that it's now about, uh, over 80,000 hectares. <clears throat> there are 55% uh, are uh, operated by big companies. When I say big companies, they are United, uh, they are Del Monte, uh, Dole, Chiquita, Somifro, La Pandai, Tadeco, and these companies. But recently, because of the change in the dynamics of trading, because before, only these, those big companies with ships can transport the, the bananas. And if, if, uh, even if you can produce, if you cannot bring your bananas in the market, then you are not in the trade. But uh, uh, with the revolution of the transport business, where, uh, where uh, uh, a ship would uh, have a container for that, so uh, there are a lot of traders now buying from small scale Cavendish growers, and about 45% of them uh, are independent growers. But when we say small scale growers for Cavendish, they are those with 10 hectares, 20 hectares, 100 hectares. And if they visit their farms, they ride in Montero or um, uh, SUVs. They are rich people, but they are not the multinationals. So uh, I, I think I have one here, uh, <laughs> a, banana, a bananero guy at the back. Uh, he has 60, they have 65 hectares, and they are small-scale farmers. Uh, so um, this uh, industry is very important. And they are, there are many players. These are the companies uh, uh, involved in the banana business. There are now many. Before, it used to be just three major companies of traders. Nikita, Do, and Del Monte. And they bought from Adekula, and etc. Now there are many players. <coughs> this industry provides a tremendous uh, uh, employment uh, 
uh, well, you know, sometimes you think that yeah, the, 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 they are multinationals, they are uh, for export. So what? The, they are not small scale farmers. But if you look at it, they generate a lot of employment, 320,000 uh, people. And this is a, a fact. Every year, 720 million US dollars are exported to by, by the Philippines. 720 million. We are the second top exporter of cabbages of bananas in the whole world after Ecuador. Um, we used to be number four, but uh, because of the expansion of market, then uh, we became number two. And uh, 414 million dollars uh, salaries and wages. I should have uh, uh, calculated this in pesos, uh, but since uh, some of my audience are international, so I have this. 41 million local government tax revenues. 27 million taxes remitted by related industry suppliers, the service providers around this company, around this industry, are also providing employment. Rather, uh, aside from tax, they are also providing employment. So uh, the, 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 multi, uh, the, the multiplying effect of the industry is tremendous. Uh, where is the market of the Philippine banana uh, in this export? The four major markets are Japan, which is the number one, followed by, um, I, th uh, I think now Middle East, then South Korea, and China. There are others, like Indonesia, they export, import South Singapore, Brunei, New Zealand. And we were opening also Australia, in Australia, but there has been some protectionism that has been happening. Uh, so anyway, these are the, our major markets. And if you look at, in terms of comparison of countries uh, uh, producing bananas and exporting to different parts of the world, uh, we are number two after Ecuador. So it's a huge business, huge business. We don't appreciate it because we don't actually eat cabbages. Mas masarap yung nakatan natin eh. There are so many cabbages doon sa mga rejects nila, they are mountains and hills. Pero hindi na hindi natin kinakain yun eh. Kasi mataba, uh, I think mataba. Okay, here comes the disease. Fusarium will, Panama disease. This is the symptoms. If you uh, read, if you, you are a plant pathology student, and I hope uh, you still uh, teach the classical diseases in plant pathology. Panama disease. Uh, when I was a student in plant pathology, when I hear about Panama disease, it's like, okay, Panama disease, it enters here, it uh, gets out of the other ear. But when I uh, had the now, uh, uh, first hand experience of this disease, I realized the magnitude of damage this disease has uh, in, uh, inflicted to the banana industry. It is called Panama disease because in 1920, the first disease broke out in Panama and uh, in, it is caused by a uh, fungus, Prosarium uh, oxysporum, uh, form of specialis pubense. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, uh, genera or uh, species. You can uh, you better make it in plant pathology or mycology because Prosarium oxysporum is uh, ubiquitous uh, fungus. It's found everywhere, multitudes of them. There are Fosarium oxysporum. You can never differentiate what a Fosarium oxysporum uh, attacks tomato or uh, chili from the, the, the Fosarium oxysporum that attacks, uh, that, that, that attacks bananas. Uh, they have the so-called formal specialists there, but yet, and yet they are specialized in one crop. That's why they are called the one, one, one host. That's why they are called uh, this forma specialis cubensi. And the only way you can say that this is cubensi is when, that, when it attacks the, uh, uh, the host, uh, the, the plant. But uh, recently there are tools to identify whether uh, it's cubensi or some other disease uh, uh, species. Okay, uh, why is it so threatening? Because it kills the plant completely. Unlike other diseases, it will cut, uh, unlike Sigatoka, it will, and other diseases, it will kill the plant completely. And 
the most um, worrying part of it is that it will stay in the soil for decades, even half a century. I have circumstantial evidence for that. And it, the population may go down, but once you plant a susceptible host, that pathogen will go up again. The population of that pathogen will go up again. And so far, there is no effective fungicide or biological control agents that are commercially um, useful. And uh, the thing is that this disease affects uh, many important cultivars. Uh, uh, and since we are talking of Cavendish, uh, let's put banana industry, there is no Cavendish uh, um, variety with exactly the same quality and uh, yield as the commercial varieties that are, that's available. And um, uh, since we are talking, talking of export industry, these uh, plantations are perennial in scrapping, scrapping systems. So that it's the build-up of inocula uh, is um, inherent to the cropping system that the Cavendish industry is, uh, the Cavendish uh, uh, crop is produced. Okay, a bit of history. Again, I said it was an epidemic in 1920. It destroyed a variety of choice at that time called Gros Michel, a variety Gros Michel, that's for export. Mas masarap ito matamis kaysa yung Cavendish. And um, ang pag-ano nila, pag-export nila noon, kasi very resistant sa uh, horses yan. Na, uh, if they harvest it, they will just simply hang them in the ship, and it goes to New York. Um, but this was very susceptible uh, to race one. And from 1920 to 1950s, when they can no longer plant this variety because of epidemics of race one, there was no option but to change the variety from Ross Michel to Cavendish. So we are talking of 20 to 1950, so that's 30 years. So in terms of time frame, in terms of risk assessment of our part in banana industry, we have to look at that this is not an airborne pathogen that spreads uh, immediately. This is a slow moving vehicle or pathogen. And but once it's there, it's like AIDS. The AIDS does not spread very rapidly, but once you have it, the, the AIDS virus, the HIV virus, then you will have it. And the solution was to change it at that time from Bruce Michel to Cavendish. Cavendish is a natural clone. At that time, the market did not like Cavendish. But what can they do? Uh, they, do they cannot produce anything. So it was a very painful and very expensive um, era of change of variety. It's a simple. It's simple now as we look at it because we are uh, looking at it uh, about uh, 60, 60 years uh, later. But at that time, the the economic, uh, the business impact at that time was tremendous. I am uh, always showing this uh, this uh, slide. This is a slide that I took from here, as, uh, as it was mentioned by the by the. Uh, Master, I lived in Honduras for 10, uh, 10 years, Central America. And uh, uh, the variety, the plant there, these are plantations. So these are all, this is the residential area that I, I live. What I am trying to tell you here is in the 10 years that I've been in Central America from Colombia to, uh, to uh, Mexico, I manage. Uh, 100,000 hectares of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, research aspect of, uh, of plantations. I did never see any Cavendish plant that was affected by, uh, by fusarium. Uh, Simply because this variety has been, I think, is immune to the race that is found in Latin America. Why is it that they not, uh, uh, there's no mutation or whatever, or there's no change of virulence? I think this is an issue because um, I think simply because uh, bizarre pathogens are not sexually reproducing and therefore there is not much sexual variation. And um, uh, unfortunately, so people thought that the problem is over, there was no more research, this is the old research of the United Fruit Company and we donated that to, to a national program called FIA because there was no more uh, 
issue of Rosarium. Uh, we were unsuccessful. I mean, my predecessors were not unsuccessful because they were not able to produce a variety uh, resistant to this disease. But then in the, in the 80s, in Asia, when we expanded the companies in Asia, all of a sudden there, are, there is a race of this Fusarium will, a Fusarium pathogen that can attack the cabinets, the immune cabinets. So the problem is not over. The, the ugly, uh, uh, the, as the same, the ugly heads of the head of this pathogen is again rearing. Uh, it's rearing again its uh, ugly heads in, in Asia. And it's named Tropical Race 4. And this tropical race war actually started in Taiwan in 1967. Taiwan is the first country that established cabbage plantations ahead of the Philippines. And the epidemic uh, in Thailand started in 67, but uh, the severe epidemics were 1970s and the 80s. And then in 1989-1990, uh, it occurred in Malaysia. Uh, the recent one is China and the Philippines. Taiwan dominated the export market in the 70s. And the 70s and the 80s, the uh, epidemic came. If you look at this, uh, uh, this, uh, this the panel in Taiwan. If you look at this uh, graph, it's a tenfold decrease in volume of bananas that is exported by the Taiwanese, simply because of their inability to produce bananas because of this animal. This is Malaysia and Indonesia. I know this quite well by heart because in the 1990s, uh, I was in charge of research of Chiquita. We tried to establish plantations in Indonesia and Malaysia to compete with the uh, Philippine banana market and Philippine banana production because the Middle East market was opening. And uh, Indonesia has also good soil and industrious um, people. So we thought that we should establish plantations in Indonesia. And uh, fortunately for us, the Filipinos, in two years, three years, they were wiped out by this uh, pathogen, the tropical race war. So they did never become a competitor. Thanks God. <laughs> but then in 1999-2001, uh, there was an uh, epidemic of Sari uh, Will in China. They believed that this uh, banana, this uh, infection came from Taiwan because that was the time that China was opening its borders and they were establishing plantations in the southern part of China and now they have plenty of uh, Osari Will, 6,000, 7,000 uh, hectares, it could be more that are, not, uh, that are not affected and this is particularly important for, for uh, China because China, banana in the southern part of China, the Guangdong province and the Guangxi Province. These provinces are banana areas. Mm -hmm. They produce much more cavities than we do produce in the Philippines. The only thing is they they consume it. Especially now that the Chinese are rich, or you just simply ask uh, um, one Chinese to eat uh, one or two bananas every year. Uh, you you need a lot of plantations of bananas to supply that demand. And um, that's the reason they have a lot of bananas also, and and mainly Cavendish, mainly Cavendish, and therefore they are at risk of this disease. And uh, so uh, that ten percent imported actually is coming from the Philippines, and we are hoping that they will import more. Uh, our people from the bow are saying, "Sana eh kasalat yung sakit doon." Pero Sabi naman ng mga Chinese, sana, sana, sana ay kakarap din, lalala din ang sakit sa Pilipinas. <coughs> that's, uh, that's the situation. Okay, the Philippines. This is the Tadeco plantation. Actually, Panama Wilt has been recorded in the Philippines as early the 1970s. But those infections were thought of less virulent. They were not virulent. And so, hindi masyadong pinapansin. And in fact, um, ito ang mga records. So, it does not, it, uh, what it says here is that Panama will ask the disease, it's not new, it has been there. But the problem is that in 2000, when they started planting 
you know, I, uh, when we started planting in the highlands, because the the Taiwan banana is more expensive in Japan because they are sweeter. The reason is that the bananas grown in Taiwan because of the cooler situation are sweeter, more sugar, uh, more soluble uh, sugar. And so, so if our uh, banana, one box of banana cost uh, $6 per box, their bananas cost 8 to $9 per box, simply because they are sweeter. So what happened in the Philippines is that they expanded, the plantations expanded in the highlands. You all have noticed, uh, you might have heard that, that is in Mukinon, in the highlands. And, uh, and they planted an area where it used to be planted by Lahatan, with Lahatan. And that Lahatan historically was in, uh, severely affected by, by Panama wheel. And people thought that this was race one. But when they planted Cavendish, all of a sudden Cavendish was affected. And so it must be a different animal. So it, uh, the, the, um, the plantation in the highland was severely affected. And in 2003, um, uh, more uh, farms were infected, and uh, some farms again are infected in the lowland, the main growing areas. And it had increased. This is a, this is a picture that I uh, took in 2003. And even earlier, I have monitored this disease, and I have uh, tried to provide the warning to the industry. <coughs> uh, at first, they are sporadic in uh, plantation. This is true because, as you can, as, as your epidemiology course uh, uh, tells you, we have learned in your epidemiology that diseases like soilborne diseases are sporadic uh, in their uh, occurrence uh, uh, in, the, in nature. They are not like uh, an airborne pathogen where infection could be uh, more general. So that's how it uh, how, uh, starts. <coughs> now, this, it spread. And we thought that uh, this, the spread of that disease was through the irrigation water. Because this, this, that irrigation water comes from here, from the river. And this river comes from Kalinan. That Kalinan is the island that was affected by, uh, by Panama disease. And since this is a soil-borne pathogen, it is uh, that if the soil is washed into the river, and, the, and, and that um, uh, irrigation, uh, overhead irrigation, is uh, uh, delivered into the farms, then you are spreading the pathogen. So that's how uh, we believe it happened. And as the disease progressed, the incidence progressed, they started uh, um, uh, uh, cutting and uh, uh, um, uh, more uh, plants. <coughs> at that time, at uh, 2005, I said, you must wake up. There is something. I, I met the PPGA group. Uh, and they were not very um, excited at that time because they thought that it was the whole disease. The question was, is this the dreaded tropical racehorse? So we did a survey, uh, in, uh, we collected in 2005 of the different varieties, the different infections in the region. And we confirmed, and I presented this, uh, this uh, paper in the American Phytopath Society in 2008, we confirmed that this is indeed the tropical race for the dreaded uh, race of this pathogen. Okay? And uh, uh, again, I said uh, it started expanding. And this is a picture, chronological picture that I took in Davao, 2003, 2006. You cannot see it, uh, it was not very clear, but if you get closer, almost uh, every plant, are they are yellowing. There's yellow, there's now a general increase. And in 2011, there are new plants there, houses. They abandoned those, they abandoned those uh, parts because they can no longer produce bananas. Okay? And, okay, what has, uh, what has been done? What have they done for the situation? The Panama, the Panama disease incidence has since spread and increased in incidence. They did eradication and prevention of spread protocols. They have protocols to, to prevent it using the, uh, a MOCO protocol, MOCO is a bacterial disease. But um, uh, that, uh, that protocol may not be sufficient for a fungal pathogen that has uh, chlamydia spores. Uh, bacterium, you know very well uh, that they are more sensitive to desiccation than, than uh, chlamydia spores or uh, of, uh, fungus. And also, 
You know, the banana companies are not quite uh, well with personalities and the dynamics of the industry. They are very secretive. Even if they are already diseased, they said, oh, we don't have a disease, we don't have anything. So they were doing things independently. And I was trying to, to, to raise awareness to the whole industry. I met with BPDA, I met with independent growers cooperative and tried to, 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 to do uh, uh, some public awareness. They created a Posarium Task Force in 2008, headed by uh, former Secretary uh, Sebastian. I was a member of that uh, and uh, co-headed by, co-chaired by the director of BPI. It died a natural death at that time. Yeah. Now, the problem is that independent growers, 50% of the industry don't have the technical capacity as big growers. This is, for instance, um, uh, this is Lafandai. They have a way to, they are, they are very strict in quarantine uh, and to uh, uh, prevent the spread. Okay. Early detection and they burn it with, um, you see, you might see, you say, say, oh, this one, this plants are still healthy. Why are, what are they doing? But the key for, er for eradication is early detection and you eradicate them appropriately. The problem with the banana companies, the small-scale banana companies, and I have pointed this out time and time again, even some big companies uh, who do not have the technical capabilities, is that small-scale farmers, once they see a symptom, they inject it with uh, what we call vampire. Banana, yung banana steak, uh, bamboo steaks, deep in uh, herbicide, uh, <coughs> glyphosate, for uh, 12 hours, parang steak. Then they they stop it into the pseudo stem, and that plant will die. Ganyan, na yan. Uh, uh, and they just let it stay there. But they do not realize that a fungus, that, that's okay for bacterium, because bacterium, once the plant dies, it's more or less some sort of an obligate parasite. Um, is that once it die, it, uh, the, the plant dies, the, the bacterium will die. That's what they do for muco. But for a fungus, the more you let it stay there and it, it feels that uh, his, its uh, reproductive cycle is uh, threatened because its host is, uh, is dying, the, the mechanism of survival comes in, then it produces spores, more spores. And that's what might happen when they kill the plants like that, there are more spores in the soil and the, 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 the population will not increases. And simple technologies, uh, simple basic, basic science, but then if you don't, uh, you don't know it, then that's a problem. Okay. So, things happen. Now many farmers have abandoned the, uh, or they are severely affected already, small scale farmers. Now they are crying for help. No, I was uh, I was flattered uh, somehow because uh, it says in November 28, 2008, Dr. Agustin Molina warned a major uh, thing like that, and they did not believe me. They did not believe me. So then, uh, until it's an advanced stage, kung a uh, stage four na kung cancer. So now everybody, governments are supporting it. I'm asked by Picard to help them devise uh, this, uh, a program by the Avar and everything. Are, uh, and the industry are supporting a lot of research. That's not, that's the way. But anyway, okay. Uh, some farms are already abandoned. The press release was uh, sensationalized, but maybe yes and no. It's good also that they sensationalize it because it, it, it's a wake-up call. Whether the area affected is accurate or not, the fact is that some farms are already severely affected and spread is continuing. They are now rushing support for, for research. So there are other management strategies that uh, uh, we are trying to look at in terms of R&D, uh, developing disease-resistant varieties, biological chemical control, Cropping system improvement, clean planting materials, and more cropping. When you ask a scientist from a university or anyone, they would say, 
use of resistant variety is the, the cheapest uh, and most sustainable way of uh, managing diseases. That is why the more they will always look at that and put that in a justification rationale. But you know, the breeding program for Musa started in the 1950s and we spent in companies uh, millions and millions of dollars. And up to now, there is no Cavendish variety that is produced by a traditional conventional breeding. Uh, the Secretary of Agriculture called me the, uh, about a month ago and asked me, how much does it take so that we can produce a variety? And I said, that, and I, gave, I gave him a story of my life. <laughs> and, uh, and so that, uh, but I said, at this point in time, you don't need rocket science. First is to diagnose early detection, you eradicate and prevent spread. That's the best thing that you can do right now. And in order to be effective, you do capacity building on diagnosis. And you have to develop a way, a protocol of how to eradicate this. You don't need the variety like that, uh, a breeding program. Um, start a breeding program. And then, biological control. Again, if you go to American Phytopath Society meetings uh, about decades ago, there, is, there was, in fact, uh, 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 there were uh, uh, sessions devoted to biological control. And if you go to literature, there are always good uh, agents for biological control. I'm not saying that it's not going to be effective. We have to continue uh, uh, researching on biologic, biological control, but it must be uh, directed. We have to see where it works and uh, where is the weakness of the system. Most of the time we are good in, in doing some antagonistic tests, then we do that, that, we publish it, etc. But we don't know how to deliver it to the market. Formulation and delivery and application. And what are the enabling conditions in the soil that can make a biological control agents work. So the, it's a, there is still an R&D issue here, and this is one thing that uh, we have to look at. Uh, one important problem inherent to the uh, Cavendish industry it is uh, its cropping system, its monocrop plantation. Hindi mo naman pwede convince si Indian sila kay Mr. Proriendo na sige ha, taniman natin ng mais itong next year ha, taniman natin ng bahay next year itong 8,000 hectares mo, or mag-intercrop uh, tayo ng palay. You cannot do that. That's business. And uh, so then, um, that's the problem. Uh, we have to adapt to the situation. That's the reason I said that small scale farmers are more resilient. Okay. Will it have the same impact as uh, we had uh, with Panama Wheel uh, about uh, the 1950s? Well, there are no, uh, time has changed. There are no technologies that are now available. Uh, we now have better irrigation system. We do not. Uh, they now have replaced the overhead irrigation. Before it was power irrigation in Central America. Now they have drip irrigation, under drip irrigation. So there is now uh, lesser. Uh, and the tissue culture for planting materials. Before pagpagtanim sila, I they were using suckers. So knowingly, yun ay mga seed, ay mga soils no, na infect, infested na rin, uh, or infected na rin yung roots. So the mayo may tissue culture na. Uh, but they had, uh, they had advantage at the time. They have more land, so they move from one place to the other. Ngayon, wala na. You cannot move from one place to the other. So we have to, we better protect those uh, uh, lands. Uh, the promise of biotechnology, I, it, this is debatable. I'm not a good fan of biotechnology. I, in fact, um, uh, well, will this be accepted? I don't know. Now, development of variety, long-term sustainability. But the thing is, variety is market-driven, type of quality variety. Conventional breeding, very difficult. Yellow market acceptability is an issue. Non-conventional selection or some clonal variability is the one that I am very much interested in. Use of interspecific, interspecific diversity, like mixture of crops, this is not applicable to the uh, plantation things. So, uh, what are we doing? Uh, this is the, uh, I'm going now to the uh, uh, finishing lines. Uh, what are the specific things that uh, we are doing? Uh, with DA, Bar, Picard, weather with this industry, it's uh, a participatory 
uh, development of from evaluation and promotion of improved cabbages from Taiwan. Why should we develop uh, a variety if we can get some? It's so difficult. You know, in Taiwan, they have problems of typhoon. They can grow Taiwan. And so, uh, and they have the Zarin wheel. So they develop a system of tissue culture. They were the first one to develop tissue culture in the whole world as commercially because they have the commercial opportunity to use tissue culture. Um, they pay, uh, produce millions of tissue culture planting materials every year. But the problem of the tissue culture is that is what we call optides, mutation. Uh, we do not want tissue culture or planting materials that you have high mutation rate. May may malit, may mataas, mayroong uh, malilit ng bunga. So what, uh, we don't want that. So what, uh, they improve the tissue culture at 5% only of optide. But, they, since they are planting millions and millions of, uh, of tissue culture and materials in the field where there are infestations of fusarium wheel, so they have now a natural selection, a seedbed nursery to select, and they involve the farmers to select. So there's, there was a part, further part, participatory selection, and they developed this type of, of, of selection lines. Uh, GC means giant cavendish. Uh, and they have uh, selected uh, uh, many lines, and the ones in blue, are, we have them in the Philippines now, I think we, uh, I went through biodiversity because we have the repository of international varieties. I was able to bring in these varieties. We have six varieties right now in IP, uh, IPB and BPI, and, uh, and we started uh, evaluating under field condition. When the industry was not interested, we, I worked very silently with La Pandai because Lapandai has a problem. And so I worked evaluating GCDCB 119 and Granane, this severely affected area. I evaluate, evaluated Granane, Williams, these are the commercial varieties, GCDCB 119, 218, Lakatan, Lapunda. Look at infection of primary crop. Only 1% infection on this, while patay na yung Granane, Lakatan, Lapunda, etc. That's how effective, uh, how resistant the disease. And this is a cavendish, because it's a variant, so a clonal variant. And so these two lines are uh, 109, and these two, uh, two rows are the uh, cavendish. Uh, so it is, we have an opportunity. The problem, however, is it's not as high yielding as granate. So what we are proposing, uh, so what we are proposing is that with DAPAR is we are going to work with small scale farmers na hindi na nila kayang magtanim. Uh, they can, they, their farms are not productive. So uh, ang option sa kanila is iwanan na lang yung farm nila at magtanim na lang sila ng kamuti or whatever. Pero alam mo yung the income of a farmer of a banana is 10 times that rice. So uh, it's so difficult to, 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 to get away from from banana. So our proposal is we are going to plant this 119 because they are not uh, they are resistant and we will ask the farmers to be part in a participatory selection of improved genotype, improved agronomic traits, uh, better uh, yield, etc. And so through uh, some clonal selection. I hope this uh, I hope that, uh, we hope to start this project uh, very soon. Uh, okay Production system, the, product, uh, the situation is the way uh, and quality is required in uh, the market. They want Cavendish. So we don't have available uh, funds. These are the problems. Long term so survival of the path, pathogen in search. Once you have Karun Kanadian, Kalimutan Mun and Yung Parin, maski 150 years. Uh, small growers will be most affected than big growers. When I say small growers, yung mga independent growers, hindi yung Lakatan at saka sa growers sa so, the Philippine bananas may not be competitive in the global market because the cost will be higher. Anong implication niya? The banana companies, these multinationals, will move from one country to the other. And we did a survey, I did, I did not include the, the, the slide here, but we did a survey, a uh, regional survey, and we found out that uh, there are still countries where TR4 are not present. And now, Del Monte, and though these are multinational substantive planting in Sri Lanka and in, in Vietnam and in Cambodia, it is, yeah, it is uh, imperative for us as Filipinos to protect this industry 
and um, uh, and uh, we as plantologists or scientists uh, uh, will have to will have to work a little bit harder. Production constraints not only and, and that kind of risk of moving from one country to the other is aggravated by the fact that there is another disease. In fact, for the industry, this is more important disease because this determines whether they can export a banana this year because Chigatoka is a very virulent disease. And they are spending so much banana money already in spraying. And so with two diseases hand in hand that affects the uh, as constraints to the viability of the Philippine banana industry, it, anything can happen. These are multinationals, they can move uh, anywhere. And I hope uh, they won't do that. And so I started with this uh, uh, slide. Will this happen? With you, uh, well, uh, most of you are students, with you as scientists, we can prevent it, at least we can uh, delay it uh, coming. But we as scientists, we must always bear in mind the relevance of what we do as in science and urgency. The problem is that when we work in a, in a government, uh, the urgency is not. Uh, we are retired, we would like to retire in our work uh, already. And the relevance is that whether it uh, applies or not, as long as we can publish, and then we can get promoted, that, that works. So that, that's the motivation. Uh, but uh, having said that, I think deep in ourselves, we still would like to have our work in science relevant to the um, farmers. Thank you very much.
uh, hindi pa exhaustive yun nga gusto kong punduhan ng ano ng behavior as a research uh, so ayan po uh, uh, isa suggest ko yan uh, although we have already samples yung pinadala ni Tess nung araw uh, we found that there are no PR4 BCG 12-13-16 but those were very limited samples and it should be a systematized something to represent the different geographic areas Well, thank you very much. Uh, sir, there's a follow-up. Sir, were you able to determine paano tayo nagkaroon na CR for sa Newton? Oo, parang magandang question niya. Maraming, you know, 2005, nung nag-meet ako ng, uh, when we, I met with the PBGA, nagtuturuan sila. Sabi, baba, meron nung, um, ano, lalo pinakita ko yung sa history. May kasamahan kami na ako na pumunta sa Malaysia, nagtrabaho sila sa kanila. Maybe dinala nila yung sakit. Okay. <laughs> uh, that is possible. Just like in China, it was brought by uh, planting materials from Taiwan. Definitely. But uh, it is also possible that it is native to the country. That um, uh, you don't know that it exists. Uh, the fact is that we have so many cultivars in, uh, in the Philippines, uh, wild and other and so forth and so on. So the pathogens can, could have to evolve with the different varieties. So that when you plant a susceptible variety in that area, then it will come out. Pero kung hindi ka magtalim ng susceptible variety, it will not be detected. Incidentally, nung umakyat sila to plant a sweet banana, don't. So I cannot answer that. The fusarium will be susceptible to different variants of the Musa Ali up, Musa genus of the banana of the banana. And the focus of your presentation is on the food uh, the edible ba banana variants. I just wonder if since the manifestation of the disease makes uh, causes internal vascular discoloration of the pseudocyte of the banana, does it affect the mucetexitis variety? Yes. I'm John B. Sandberg, the freshman Yes, it does affect. Uh, uh, is uh, susceptible to 